all, I mean, the market's holding on, actually. 80 points up on the Nifty, so it's uh, not bad at all. Bank Nifty is marching away, and today, technology is the big driving force. Just doing a quick check on Reliance. Uh, Reliance is quietened out after its telemove yesterday. It's just digesting some of that gain. Uh, very, very flat at this point in time on RIL. Okay, good time to then get some perspective on the market. We have Anand Shah, head PMS and AIF Investments at uh, ICICI Pru AMC. You know, I mean, I'm not getting into any conflicting issues, Anand, but since, uh, you know, we were just discussing this, this is your thoughts on NBFCs and banks. They've had a lot to contend with, particularly NBFCs and fintechs in terms of more regulation, very tight compliance. What do you make of the relaxation that came in yesterday with respect to NBFCs investing in AIF schemes? Uh, where that AIF in turn invests in some of the debtor companies. Hi, hi very good morning. Uh, I think uh, what we've been seeing all along, uh, both uh, from RBI and SEBI, and uh, what we've observed is, I think, uh, it's fairly proactive. I think, uh, uh, as you all know, market's been doing very well. Uh, the personal loan is growing uh, very rapidly. The unsecured loan is growing very rapidly. And to that extent, uh, the regulators have been more proactive this time around uh, to make sure that, you know, no uh, large bubble is being built and, and which leads to then sudden fall uh, in, in particular segment of the market or equity markets in general leading to a slowdown in the economy uh, because of that fall. So I think uh, overall, all in all, uh, looks like, uh, you know, you want to avoid a large mishap and to that extent many regulations are or sort of at least the caution uh, are coming through from regulators at this point of time, which uh, to, to my understanding is very welcome uh, at this point of time. Mm. Uh, Anand, um, you know, morning. Uh, how are you feeling about the market per se as we enter into FI25 now? What is your positioning and what's been the big change that you made in your portfolio? I think we've been uh, keeping the portfolio more or less the same. I think our view uh, is that the stock picking would be very key. Uh, look, markets have rallied. And there would be pockets of the market which would be very expensive uh, or, or to that extent frothy as well. But at the same time, the fact of the matter is that the earnings growth have been far better for the last three to four years than what had been in the previous five years before 2020. So. Uh, that's a significant change. And to that extent, uh, to do the complete analysis of individual businesses is very important. Uh, we look at B, M, and V, which is business management and valuation, all three. Uh, and I think today as we speak in FI25, it will become more important uh, that you scrutinize every investment more than uh, what you would have done three years back, four years back, when generally the market had corrected valuations uh, across the board were reasonable. And to that extent, uh, with very little research, you could be fairly comfortable. Today, uh, that's not the case. Uh, so every time uh, you're incrementally investing money in the markets, one needs to be very careful in terms of what businesses you're buying, what managements you're backing, and at what price you're buying uh, those business and management. Okay. Hi, Anand. Uh, good morning and good to see you, Ben. What's your view on the pharma space? You know, people say that 2024 has started off more or less flattish for the nifty mile positive bias, but that index itself is up more than 11%. Remember, it's coming out of a multi-year underperforming cycle. Your view on the, on the pharma space and what you are like? Indeed, I think since almost uh, 2012, uh, uh, when, when actually sector hit, multi-year high valuations and, and to that extent also a good growth they came out from. Since then, there has been challenges, uh, particularly more recently, uh, the challenge has been more uh, around uh, pricing in the US generics market. And that's been a, so, some bit of a solace. Pre-2020, if you see, there was a consolidation both in terms of uh, pharmacy chains as well as insurance companies in US leading to significant price pressure on the US generics market. I think that's ebbing. Uh, also, we had a brief period uh, of, uh, you know, 2020, 2021 also, which was uh, good years of a pharma uh, industry in general. But when we look at our portfolio, when we look at individual companies, uh, to be very honest, each business is very different. Uh, and, and to generalize the pharma sector has always been very difficult and it continues to remain difficult. So while uh, what I'm telling you, uh, just... Uh, couple of minutes back that the stock picking will be, will be very important. 
when it comes to pharma sector it becomes that much so more important uh, because each business is different each business uh, has different levers for earnings growth rate and and to that extent each needs to be evaluated sir mm. but you get broadly on the it sector anand where do you stand accenture spoiled the mood going into uh, the q4 earnings come april um i guess there are always you know winners even last year we had so many of these mid cap stocks like persistent do well while the large cap struggle so while stock picking remains paramount broadly where do you stand on technology going into next year so we've been uh, consistently uh, for last two years been more overweight manufacturing manufacturing allied we've been remained underweight on it and yes we did get some bit of a relief rally in it stocks more recently uh, but the challenge remains that you know in in the in the year 2021 uh, 2020 uh, you had very strong growth uh, given that businesses could invest in it as they had very little less uh, expenditure to do on office and, and travel i think that's coming back and to that extent uh, the growth expectations for the it companies needs to be reset and i think that's what uh, the journey it comp- in the investors are going through for last two years So yes, uh, the growth expectations are toning down, but my take is, uh, I think there's still some time to go uh, before the real growth that one can ex- one would see in the IT companies and what the investors are expecting. That that misalignment is still a few quarters away, is what I would say. Mm. Anand, what about some of these domestic-facing themes like cement? You know, pricing actually has been. Uh... very weak in quarter 4 volumes have been fairly good the problem is we're getting into an election period so price hikes will be difficult to come about and be absorbed and also there'll be various projects that will slow down so volumes as well will take a hit but some of those stocks have come in to fairly attractive levels how are your position there indeed i think one will have to take a long term view yes the next 3 months uh, would be what rightly said uh, would be the uh, the phase when uh, you know there would be slow down in general uh, a lot of uh, focus would move to elections and and to that extent uh, you know you would see some bit of slow down in that sector and that applies to many sectors and not only restricted to cement but uh, if you take a little bit long term view i think uh, uh, our view is uh, urbanization leading to growth in the housing uh, will be the key driver uh, apart from manufacturing uh, manufactured exports uh, manufactured goods exports uh, where where again the focus of government is significant uh, would be the key driver and in 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 whichever way you look at it infrastructure housing uh, the cement would be the key ingredient so uh, uh, we we've been underweight on cement for a while uh, but that's one sector which uh, will have as and when will have a good growth Would have good operating leverage, uh, given that the pricing is weak. Pricing is a room to go. Hmm. Okay. So Anand, uh, you know, all things equal, given that the markets entered into this bit of a consolidation patch, and we have you know a lot of events coming ahead: credit policy, elections, so on and so forth, so on and so, you know, so forth. Um, you know, what is going to be your uh, portfolio construct and view, at least for the the first half of the new year that we are in? Uh, any new themes that perhaps uh, you are looking to add at this point so uh, we've been uh, as i told just before that we've been overweight manufacturing uh, select manufacturing especially where we are seeing a lower price mm-hmm. erosion or a lower price pressures coming out of china uh, and that's part of that is structural we believe so that's one area manufacturing allied particularly power uh is the another area where we seeing growth uh, sustaining uh, into the next few years uh, apart from that corporate banks uh, the banks which would be also beneficiary of recoveries from the past nps so these are the three large areas where we have been sort of overweight incrementally i think uh, the indian consumer is also changing so while indian consumer was a large consumer of goods uh, in the last two decades next two decades you will see will incrementally consume goods but also consume a lot of services so the hospitals diagnostics hotels travel uh, even wealth management services uh, financial services these are the areas where we are seeing far better growth rates than what you are seeing in the traditional consumer space so i think that's one area uh, which we call experiential consum- consumption consumption 
uh, where uh, beyond a certain per capita income, that becomes a large part. And that's where we are seeing uh, that over the next two decades, the Indian consumer is more going to be rich and the upper middle class where the services consumption will be a bigger buy than the products consumption. So those are the areas where we are uh, incrementally looking for opportunities. Anand, uh, we leave the conversation here for now. Thank you very much uh, for joining in. Let's turn our attention.